So, so let me do this question. It says, shown in the following figure is a long straight wire that's carrying some current um, and a single turn rectangular loop, both of which line in the plane of the page, okay? The wire is parallel to the long side and yeah, 0.5 meter away from the closer side. At an instance when the voltage induced in the loop Oh, okay, there's a voltage induced there. So there must be Faraday's law involved. What is the rate of time, rate of change of the current in the wire? Hmm. So I guess this is apparently gonna be a function of time. So I hope uh, when, as you read through this question and think about, you get a sense of what's a physically meaningful, relevant thing. Which is, so this is a, a unusual question in that the question didn't give you what the magnetic field is. It actually gave you the setup that produces the magnetic field. And it's up to you to figure out what the magnetic field due to this setup is. And so, you know, you use right hand rule. Uh, I'm using the second version of right hand rule where my thumb points it in the direction of the current, then the way my Fingers curl gives you the direction of magnetic field. So with the current going from left to right, my magnetic field at the top points out of the screen, at the bottom points into the screen. So the magnetic fields here are going to look kind of circular out of the screen, into the screen, and it's kind of a circle that connects them. And this is repeated infinitely to the left and right. So, oh yeah, that's why part A is asking for what is the expression for magnetic field B due to the current I in the long straight wire at distance R away? Um, I think there's a formula that I remember, which is magnetic field due to a line of current is, I happen to have this memorized. <laughs> it, um, wait, do I have it? Yeah, I do have it memorized. Mu naught over two pi R times I. It's the magnetic field due to a line of current. I have that memorized. Or, you know, if you want to write this in terms of the other coefficient, which uh, I forgot to edit the question, I'll do that after this session so that this is accepted correct as well. Two times the Coulomb constant divided by C squared times I over R. So, so that's the formula for magnetic field due to a line of current and, I won't go through the trouble of redriving it, but you should know how to drive it using Ampere's law if you had to. So that's the answer here. U naught over two pi r times i. Um, so oh, so it's a um, it's a, a function of r. This uh, distance r it changes the magnetic field. So yeah, that's what part B is getting at. Because the magnetic field is not uniform, you will have to use integration to calculate the magnetic flux, um, this quantity here. Find the magnetic flux through the loop as a function of I. And this is what I want you to get into habit of. Let me draw a representation of the rectangular loop here. The habit that I want you to get in uh, practice is whenever you see a setup like this, that you know the expression for flux usually is magnetic field times area, but because the magnetic field is not a constant, you have to deal with the magnitude of the magnetic field changing. Then I want you to, as a first step, think about breaking up your setup, which is if I have see this rectangular area, I want to break up this rectangular area into smaller pieces. And I think because the magnetic field only changes as a function of R in this direction, I can imagine uh, splitting this up into um, strips like this. So each strip, well, let me give this a letter, um, L. So each strip will have length L and the uh, width of each strip will be dr. So, so when I think about infinitesimal contribution to the flux, 
I can write it as magnetic field at the location R times the area element, which would be length L times dr. So, so that's my infinitesimal contribution from infinitesimal interval of the strip. And for me, if I'm trying to get the total magnetic flux, I need to add this all up. That's the integral procedure. And that integral procedure goes from R is equal to, uh, let me call this uh, R naught, um, R naught to, and since these numbers are in the figure, I uh, will call this uh, two R naught. Because um, you know, if it's randomized, then I will give it its own symbol, but two R naught uh, matches with what's in the figure. So. So, so that's the expression. And, kind of coming up with this expression, that's the hard part. Once you have written that out, then plugging in the expression for the magnetic field and integrating, that part is actually not all that hard. So I want you to um, practice this and get into this mindset of um, how you think through setting up of an integral like this. So, so with that, let me uh, actually do the integral so that I know the answer. I'm going to clear up some space here and then uh, plug in the expression for magnetic field B and finish out the integral. So the expression for magnetic field B, um, I'm, I'm going to use this expression here. I need to correct the <laughs> um, question to accept these constants. So the expression for magnetic field is 2k over c squared i over r. That's the expression for magnetic field times L times dr. Integral goes from R is equal to R naught to two R naught. Let me pull out everything that's constant. That's two K E I. I is a, it might be a function of, it is a function of time, but it's a constant with respect to change of R. So I get pulled out um, times L over c squared, I think I got everything except for one over r, and that's my uh, thing is still inside the integral with respect to r. Um, hopefully by this point, you know what the antiderivative for this is. The antiderivative for that is natural log of r. So when you take the derivative with, you get one over r back. So to evaluate this integral, I evaluate this antiderivative from r equals r naught to two r naught. And so what this will be written as natural log of two r naught minus natural log of r naught. Do the logarithm algebra. This is uh, subtraction becomes natural log of two r naught the quotient over R naught, R naught's cancel. So just natural log of two. That's what this integral ends up being, natural log of two. So with that, I think that uh, everything, that's the expression for magnetic flux. Let me write that down. Um, I'm gonna put, uh, leave the current at the very end. So it's gonna be two Ke over C squared times L times the natural log of two times I current. This is the only dynamical quantity here. The rest here are constant or things that depend uh, only on geometry. So yeah, oh, oh, and I guess you have to plug in the numerical parameters for this. So. Okay, it says find the rate of change of the current by setting this as equal to the induced, yeah, that's Faraday's law. Oh, um, I see. So I think the question, yeah, the question gives you the induced voltage. So it's a little bit backward. Normally, you know the rate of change of current and then figure out the voltage. It's having you do backward. It's giving you. So in Faraday's law, um, if we induced is equal to absolute value is equal to uh, rate of change of magnetic flux. Um, instead of having you calculate for V induced, it has given you V induced in this particular version as 2.5 volt. I think that was the right number. Yeah. 
So what you have to do here is now find the um, find the rate of change uh, DIDT of current. And so I'm going to imagine taking this derivative here. And when I look at the expression for magnetic flux, everything here is constant with respect to time. The only thing that can possibly be not constant is current I. So this derivative, the expression for this derivative is going to be absolute value. All these constants that gets pulled out of the derivative, 2k over c squared L times natural log of 2 times, oh wait, I closed the absolute value too early, times, uh, that's the coefficient, times now I apply the derivative to i. So this is going to be di dt, so absolute value. All the absolute value means we just, you know, are looking for positive quantities and all the constants here are positive. So if I just solve for di dt here, I should get the answer. So solving for the rate of change of current, I get the induced voltage divided by this coefficient here, which is a little bit unwieldy, but let me just write it out. Natural log of two. So plug in the numbers, hope, uh, work out the units, uh, you know, put it into Olfram Alpha or something. Hopefully you get the unit of not current, but current per second. That's the unit you should end up with. If you somehow don't get it, that means, um, um, that means <laughs> there's a mistake somewhere probably. So, oh, so since this is a numerical answer, uh, it shouldn't uh, matter. I think what I do need to fix is this, because here, uh, in addition to mu naught, I have to be able to accept K, E, and C. So I'll fix that after the session. <laughs> um, yeah, so so that's it. That's it for um, this question. Uh, I guess uh, as long as uh, this thing worked out that um, the height of this loop is same as the distance to the near side, that this actual number, 0 0.5 meter, it didn't end up mattering because it canceled out there. You know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's uh, more generalizable here. I don't think it is really because it depends on the specific shape of the thing. Okay, so... That brings us to seven o'clock. Um, so I guess <laughs> that's why I did, did, did question nine first. Um, well, uh, let me do this so much. I think I can at least uh, plug in the numbers because um, I, I don't think I have, I don't really, Unless there's a request, I don't really feel like doing question eight. <laughs> so let me plug in the numbers here and wrap it up there. So my expression for DIDT was that V induced. That was 2.5 volts divided by two times Coulomb constant divided by C squared times length L was 3.0 meters times natural log of two um, I get the answer in ampere per second yeah as I said uh, unreasonably large value 6.01 million ampere per second 6.01 million ampere per second that should be right <laughs> yeah and um, so so let me end that there. Um, 